Hey everybody, welcome to the studio. Today I want to talk to you about something that's so extremely important but most artists overlook and that's your studio lighting. Have you ever painted something that looked fantastic in your studio and then you took it outside and it just died, it became cool and flat and had no luster to it? It's because your studio lighting. So let's discuss the basics of studio lighting. It really comes down to three things with studio lighting. The first thing is the temperature of the lighting that you have in your studio. The second thing is, it's the ability to render color. And the third thing is, how much do you have in there? So let's take a look at those three things, break them down, and give you the information that you need so that you can light your studio properly. So let's start with our first element, which is light temperature. The standard in our industry is 5,000 to 5,500 degree Kelvin. What does that mean? Well, just about any show, gallery, uh, studio you go to, they're going to use bulbs between 5,000 and 5,500 degree Kelvin. So if you want to have a consistent look from place to place to place, you want to make sure that you're using 5,000 to 5,500 degree bulbs in your studio. So let's bring up a chart to show the difference between the lights. You can see here the 5500 degree is very blue. Well, that is actually simulating midday light in its perfect color rendition. So here's a good example of how that chart comes into effect. On this side, I have my studio light set to 3200 degree Kelvin. On this side, I have the studio light set to 5000 degree Kelvin. You can see on this side of my face, it's very warm, saturated with yellows and reds. That's because the light itself is very yellow. So if you're painting under an incandescent light, which is a normal household bulb, then you're saturating your board with a lot of warms. So when you go to mix a color, you won't put as many warms in there because there's already a lot of yellow and red on the board from the light. So what happens? Well, then you go outside, that yellow isn't there, and now the painting looks very flat and very dull. So let's show you what's happened. All right, so here's my original painting, Autumn Stroll, and this is color corrected to 5000 degree Kelvin. Now, if you were to paint under incandescent light and then go outside, this is what would happen. The whole painting goes flat. Why? Because as I explained, the light produces a lot of the warms in your painting, so you don't bother mixing them in. Conversely, if you have something a lot higher, like let's say you went to a 7,000 or 8,000 degree bulb, which are very hard to find in the first place, you would then paint a lot of warms into your painting because of the lack of any kind of warmth in the light. And then once you got into a natural daylight, this would happen. So you see, you gotta watch temperature. Temperature is very, 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 very important. So try to find your bulbs that are between 5,000 and 5,500 degree Kelvin, but be careful. A lot of places claim that it's a daylight bulb and it's not. So make sure that the actual Kelvin is 5,000 to 5,500 degree Kelvin and it doesn't just say daylight bulb. So the next element we've got to deal with is the color rendition index. And we can show you a lot of fancy graphs and all that and try to explain waves, but really what we need to do is explain that it's a light's ability to render color. Now, 5500 degree has the best color rendition index. It's 100 on the scale of 1 to 100. So what you're looking for when you're buying a bulb is a bulb that has a color rendition index of 90 or higher. And if this just means it's going to be able to render correctly um, then uh, an even light through most of your colors. A low CRI will actually have high spikes of what they call spikes in light and it won't render a lot of your more intense colors properly and you won't see them as vividly as you would with a high CRI. So the important thing to remember about CRI is just simply to get something that is a 90 or above and you're good to go with the CRI rating. So I've heard the term full spectral light. Well, that indicates that the light is able to render all colors between white and black, hence full spectrum. 
but advertisers, they like to put these words on packaging, but it might not be a full spectral light. So the easiest way to make sure that you're getting a good color rendition index light is to make sure that its CRI rating is 90 or above. You can even go down to about an 85, but I would try to find something that's 90 and above, and there's lots of bulbs out there that fit the 5500 Kelvin that are a CRI higher than 90. There's tons of them out there, so you don't have to settle for one that's less. So the third element we got to consider with studio lighting is how much of it is there in there. Is there actually a standard? Is there too much? Is there too little? Will having too much and too little affect your work? Absolutely. So as a standard, the point of contact or where you're actually rendering your work, you should have around 1500 to 2000 luxes to have nice balanced light. If you have it too dark, that's not a good thing. If you have it too light, that's not a good thing. So let's take a piece of uh, artwork in my studio and see what happens when it's too dark and too light. So here is a well-balanced piece of art. I have the lights in around 1800 luxes in my studio. So we have a nice balance between contrast and color. So let's overlight it. When we apply too much light in our studio, we tend not to put a lot of contrast in our work because the light is so intense that we can see every little detail that we don't put a lot of contrast in there. So then when we get to normal lighting, it looks very flat and very uh, mid-toned. Conversely, if we have too little light, we tend to be very contrasty and bring up the darks very much so because we are underlit and then when we get into um, normal lighting, as you can see here, it becomes overpowering. So there's three elements of light. And I think it's important that we go into the studio now and I'll show you, show you how I have it set up and how we balance things out with those three and how we use them and can manipulate them. So let's go into the studio. All right, so here's the desk in my studio that I do all of my painting at. And as you can see, it's right in front of a big seven foot by 36 inch window. So I get all kinds of natural light. Now, lucky today, it's very overcast and raining cats and dogs out there. So it really illustrates how much light is concentrated on the uh, actual work area where my paintings are and gives you a good idea of how well lit it is. There's ample lighting, but it's not over overlit uh, by any means whatsoever. So so let's uh, break down what I've got here and uh, what I like to paint with. So first of all, like I said, I got the big seven foot window. If that's a nice bright sunny day, I'm getting nice filtered light through there. If it uh, gets a little too heavy, I can bring down the, the visors. And if not, I keep them up. I get nice natural light. Most of the daylight through that time is gonna be in around the 5,000 degree K. So I'm gonna have a great color balance. And I'm also gonna have a great nice high CRI because you know, 5,500 at uh, noon, midday is 100% on the CRI scale. So we get the best lighting is our window, but lots of times there's situations where we can't have natural lighting. One, we don't have a nice big window or we don't have a north face window or we're filming like here. So I, when it comes to filming, I like to control my situation. So if I'm doing a, a filming session where I'm making one of your instructional videos, I want to control the light. I don't want all this filtered light coming in and back light. I want to control one, the exact temperature of my light and how much is going to be there. So I usually put down my visors, which then will block out any of the all natural light coming in. Now, why I wanna do that after I just told you that natural light is the best is because I really wanna control more of how much light is going to be on my desk and concentrated to my desk, okay? So if I have that window open, you have clouds coming over, you have uh, changes in the weather that control how much light it becomes darker, becomes lighter, cloud comes by, becomes darker. You know, uh, the high sun comes out, it really brightens up and then your focus and your, your uh, levels, your uh, exposure levels are going all over the place. So when it comes to filming, I wanna control, but we'll get to that in a minute. What I wanna do now is go over uh, a controlled environment for painting. So say you do not have natural light and you have to go with your lighting setup. Let's go over what I actually have here. So above my desk, I have a uh, 48 inch or four foot T8, F32, which means that it's just uh, emitting 32 watts of, uh, of light. 
and uh, the fixture type bulb is a, a T8. Now I use T8s and I don't like the larger size bulbs because the larger tend to give off way too much light. But why am I using fluorescent and not uh, LEDs, which we'll get to in a second. I like the natural flooding of a fluorescent. A flu fluorescent will, will uh, flood the area nicely with a more even light than any LED will do. I've tried lots of LEDs and lots of people are very happy with them and getting great results out of them. I find them to be a little too harsh even with diffusers. And so I like to use the uh, natural light of fluorescent. You can see how well it covers my whole desk. It's well illuminated. And then on either side, I have uh, two standard uh, uh, 60 watt LEDs, but they're 5,000 degree Kelvins, okay? And those two give me the actual fill light that I need when I'm filming to get a good crisp image and when you're painting. Now, it also allows me to control how much light I have on my desks because with these aperture arms, I can actually bring the lights in as close as I want. And as I bring lights in closer, I actually intensify the light. And as I recede, the light diminishes. And I'll show that in a second with an actual light meter so you can see just how much light is, is diffused by moving them further away and closer to. So as I said, I've tried LEDs. They're very fancy. They're new technology. I have them. I use them when I'm filming, talking to you off camera. Uh, for instance, the beginning of this video was taped with uh, LEDs because again, I can control the temperatures with the LEDs and I can actually use the barn doors to control where exactly the light is, which I don't really want here. I want the light to fill and flood and be even across the uh, whole surface. So how do you know if you've got enough light? Well, as I said earlier, you're looking to get somewhere between 1500 and 2000 luxes. Well, how do I know what a lux is and how do I measure a lux? Well, there's two ways you can make sure that you got enough light. All right, so the first way that we can tell if we have a well-lit area is by using a gray card, and any gray card will do. This is a 20-step card. It's uh, overkill. If you even have a uh, white to gray to black gray card, then that's more than enough. And if, even if you have just a white and black gray card, that's more than enough. So you know that you have a balanced or enough light if you can see nice, crisp, clean whites that aren't gray and deep, saturated blacks that aren't gray, okay? And also, if you can see each step going up the grayscale, you know that you've got well-balanced light, okay? If we overexpose the light, so let's turn on some more LEDs here. Our grays will, or sorry, our blacks will go gray. Our whites start filling together and it's very hard to distinguish between the two. That's an overexposed uh, uh, work area. So let's turn these lights off. All right, we'll turn those back off. And now we'll go the other way. As soon as we turn the lights back off, we're well balanced. We've got a nice clean white, deep saturated blacks. Let's turn the light off. Okay. This is obviously an underlit because one, your blacks fill. I can't see any distinguish between the grayscale until around 15 and my whites go gray. You know you're underlit. If we turn on one light, okay, still got a bit of gray in our whites. We can't really see too much of our blacks. So let's turn on another light. And there we go. Our blacks are nice and saturated, our whites are nice and clean white, and we can see each step between the gray card. That's the easiest, simplest, cheapest way to do it. And uh, I, I used it for years, I still use it now. But there's a more convenient way if you're willing to spend a little bit of money. This is a light meter. This will actually calculate the light that's on there. Now, don't make the mistake I did. If you guys want to get a good laugh, the first time I ever bought this, I turned it on and it kept on just saying one and I called and I complained and they're like, okay, we'll send you another one. Well, they send me another one out and well, it did the same damn thing. As soon as I got it, it would say one. Well, I didn't know that there was actually a cap of the sensor. So take the cap off and then you can uh, actually get a good reading. Now, what did I tell you a good balanced board was? Between 1,500 and 2,000 luxes, right? Well, we're running around 15 and a half right there, which is perfect. And 15 and a half is why we're getting the perfect grayscale. Let's turn the lights back on. 
So now we're overexposed, our whites are filling together, our blacks are looking gray. And if I go to the light board, there's so much light there that I have to go to my 20 times. So there's 2,400 luxes there. So we're over that 2,000 threshold and it fills. So that's an overexposed board, all right? So let's turn those back off. And we'll do the same thing as we did before. We're back on a nice balanced board, but let's turn a light off. And we jump all the way down to a, uh, we'll jump all the way down to almost 1200. Okay, so we're well under our 1500 threshold. And look at how gray our reds are and our blacks are filling. Let's turn the light back on. And we got that nice balanced board. Okay, so those are the two simple ways that you can check that if you've got enough light on your board. So as I said before, I've tried many other different lighting schemes and they all worked all right, but I found the simplest to be the best and the most consistent because I've controlled, especially the number one thing is my color temperature, my 5,000 degree Kelvin bulbs. I look very consistent uh, whenever I go from galleries to uh, shows to my studio. The, paintings look the same because the lighting is the same and it's consistent, okay? Try to get away from those incandescents. 99.9% .9 of the time, I have my windows open. It's a uh, terrible overcast, rainy, drizzle, miserable day out there, so I'm getting really no natural light out from there, so I would depend on more of my artificial lighting on a day, day like today. If you want to use LEDs, there's absolutely nothing wrong with LEDs. You just make sure you're, you're using a higher end LED or you'll get flicker. And if you get a lot of flicker, then you'll see that. And a good trick to learn how to, uh, if your uh, LEDs are flickering or not, is point your LED towards your phone. And if your phone starts contrasting in and out with black lines, there's some kind of flickering going on with your uh, LEDs. If not, you're good to go. So there you go, there's your crash course in studio lighting. Remember, natural light, always the best. 100% CRI. If you don't have natural lighting, then you can go with the artificial. If you're gonna go with the artificial, remember, you want uh, 5,000 to 5,500 Kelvin, you want a CRI of 90 or above, and you want your point of contact or your painting surface to have 1,500 to 2,000 luxes. Follow those three rules and you'll have fantastic lighting. So if you're going with natural light and you want to get that nice filtered light and not harsh uh, direct sun, try to use a window that's north, ideally northwest facing if you're in the northern hemisphere and southwest facing if you're in the southern hemisphere. So that's it. Follow those steps. You'll have great lighting in your studio. You'll have consistent looking work no matter where you go because the lighting is always consistent in your galleries, your studios. So that's it. That's another edition. I'm done. I'm out of here. Stay safe. Happy painting. See you next time. So you may have heard the term full spectral light. Full, spe full spe spectral normal household bulb, which we refer to as iridescent, but a standard iridescent, which is what? A home bulb. No. It is very warm. It is very red. We refer to it as an iridescent. Oh, jeez. 3200 degree Kelvin is what iridescent lights. Oh my. So the last thing that we got. So the last component of lighting up is. So the third thing we got. So the third thing. So the third thing. The third thing. So the third thing to consider when you're studio lighting. Jeez, when you're studio lighting. So the third thing to consider. So 